Oh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Larger Stories Book of the Month webinar. I'm Kep Crab, and today we're going to be talking about Inside Out. Um, and it just occurs to me, just all you who are weary, come to me, Jesus talking, and I'll give you rest. Does it does does that does that hit a chord with anybody? Um, it sure does with me. Um, it's kind of amazing to see how quickly time is going these days. Um, it just seems like yesterday I was talking to you guys about the pressures off. Um, a quick reminder, uh, next month we will be doing uh, the book of the month, and the book of the month will be Becoming a True Spiritual Community. I've got a picture of it here. Uh, it used to be called The Safest Place on Earth. Um, and I don't know who was in charge of changing all the names and stuff, but I kind of like The Safest Place on Earth. <laughs> um, you know, but, but I wasn't part of that deal. This was before, uh, before I started working with dad on the publishing side of what he did. Um, but we are going to be doing a, a webinar next month on October 27th, and that's a Wednesday. And we'll be doing that at four o'clock Eastern time. So uh, join us for that. We'd love for you to, to go over that book with us. And we'll talk, talk to you about that. And then the next month, November, just to kind of put a little seed in your mind here, we're going to be doing the Papa prayer. So uh, one of my favorites as well from dad. So as we begin today to chat about Inside Out, which was uh, Larry's best-selling book to date, um, it was written in 1987, published in 1988. Um, and, and an interesting thing is, is my brother and I and my mom were going through my dad's stuff uh, sometime shortly after he had passed. Uh, my brother came across a copy of Inside Out that my dad gave to his parents. And um, it, uh, it was just amazing. He writes in, the, in, the, in the, the, the cover here, he says, to mother and dad, this is the latest and it already feels outdated. There's so much more to say about joy and aliveness. I love you both. And that's what he wrote right in there to his parents. And then it's stamped by this book belongs to Larry J. Crabb Sr., my grandfather. And unlike my dad, um, my grandfather would mark up his books. Dad never marked up his books. He never um, took, a, took a pen or a highlighter to all that. So grandpa has been marking this book up. So this is the book that I got a chance to read um, as I was preparing for this chat today with you all. Um, and another thing that, that just occurred to me, and I, I didn't realize this, but this book was dedicated to my brother and me. And it says, uh, to my two sons, whom I love with a passion that only time strengthens my greatest privilege and deepest prayer is to be used of God to further the wonderful process of your growth in Christ. Dad, you did that. <laughs> you did that in spades. So, uh, so as we get started here, uh, just, just again to recap real quickly, we're not going to be doing a summary. As we do these books, um, as we kind of talk about these books, we're not going to kind of summarize the books for you. We, we would suggest that if you haven't read these books, go get them. If you don't know where to get them, go to largerstory.com, go to our bookstore, um, and order one of those, and we'll get it to you ASAP, um, and make sure that you have a, a, an opportunity to read that. But I've, I've made the decision today that um, I need to read Inside Out probably every year. That book is, is just powerful, and it's been a while since I've read it up until now, and, um, and so I hope that, I hope that, uh, I hope that y'all take advantage of, of that. It's a, it's a special, special book, and really kind of a launching pad for a lot of what dad was thinking. One last thing before we get started here is you'll see a, a question and answer button on the bottom of your screen. If you guys have um, have any questions or anything that uh, that you want to comment on, please just click that and maybe towards the end of today's webinar, we'll get a chance to uh, address some of those questions um, and all that stuff. So, um, you know, as as we get ready to do these these book of the months, I've I've chosen to bring on a guest with me each time I'm doing it. If that if that happens to work out. Well, today I want to introduce you guys to a close friend of mine who I've known for, I'm going to say more than 20 years now. Mm -hmm. And um, and before I introduce him, I want to just say something to you. And I haven't, I don't know if I've said this to you, Glenn, but I I want to is is I've known you for a while and I've 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 seen a transformation in your life. And what I mean by that is I've seen how you relate to me now differently. And um and we're going to get into some of the kind of stuff as to as to why that's going on and all that kind of stuff and where that transformation has come from, because that was always dad's biggest question. What really 
creates change? How do we really change? And that's all through Inside Out, as you guys know. Um, so I guess without any further ado, my really good friend uh, from South Florida by way of Delaware, Mr. Glenn Urquhart. Glenn, thanks for joining us today as we get ready to chat about Inside Out and, uh, and, and the impact that it's had on us. Um, you know, everyone has a story. And uh, I've had a chance, you know, I just want to say to the people listening yesterday, Glenn and I chatted for a little bit and then actually probably about an hour, maybe more um, uh, about what we kind of wanted to say today and just kind of getting our thoughts together. And we really decided to kind of free flow it and just let the spirit take control. And in our conversation yesterday, which was tear filled, tear filled for sure, as we talked about a lot of things going on. Um, I'm just wondering, bro, what what lingers to you uh, or in you uh, from our conversation yesterday? Hmm. that that um then happiness comes from the inside out and that everything i do to try to arrange for my own happiness is just broken cisterns um i'm i'm, I'm drinking um muddy water and um you know, some difficult things have happened in uh, my wife and wife's in my life in the last uh, couple of years and recently. Um, and, and it's forced us to come go another deeper layer of, um, okay, where does joy really come from? Where does happiness really come from? I can't arrange it. I can't manage it. I can't hide from the pain. Yeah. And I think one of the things been most deeply alive in me has been um, Hebrews 5, 8, where, where it's recorded that, that, you know, it says that Jesus learned sonship through, um, through um, obedience because of suffering. Huh. Yeah. This, this, this perfect relationship with the Father, this, this oneness that I want so much with the father want it more than anything else this oneness that jesus promised in john 17 it comes through submission as a result of suffering and i'm always running away from suffering trying to arrange to feel better you, you talked you said something yesterday though glenn that really really struck me and let me just kind of give a little context to the people that are joining us right now um Glenn had, had a son who was 38 years old, 39, 39. And he passed away uh, a year ago, last, or th th this last year, year and a half ago, yeah, year and a half ago, Christmas. Um, and we kind of unpacked some of that yesterday. Uh, many of you know what we've been going through with my wife and some of her struggles uh, with health challenges. Um, but to lose a son and, um, and Glenn, you said something yesterday that I don't think I'll ever forget, but you said that... <laughs> I, I think I know a little bit now of how God the Father felt as he, you know, as, 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 as Jesus was, was gone. And um, unpack that a little bit. I, I might not even... I, I, I would set the stage by saying that in, in, in October of 2019, I spent uh, six weeks alone at a beach house in Delaware. My wife went back to teach a course on uh, metanoia, on <laughs> how you're transformed. Um, and... Um, I'm the poster child for it is not good for man to be alone. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was crying out to God. I, I was reading Andrew Murray, Abide With Me. I was focusing on John 15. What does this mean to really abide, remain, rest in Jesus? And I just felt like God wasn't answering me. I felt abandoned. I felt like an orphan. I'm walking the beach. I'm crying out. I'm yelling. I just like, what is this oneness? I, I want it. It's hardwired into my being. I'm made in your image. Where is it? And fast forward, we go back to Florida, and suddenly our son is in the hospital, um, and he's dying. And um, we don't know why. They misdiagnosed it as blood clots. It turned out he died of cancer. I'm with him in the fourth surgery when he's dying. He calls out for me. They bring me in. And... Um, I felt a time of blackness, darkness. 
I wanted to hurt the people in the room when I knew he was gone. I had prayed for his healing. I then was, the operating rooms are very bright, but the, the light got brighter. It got richer. It got more colorful. It got, it filled me. And suddenly the, the anger, the hatred, the, 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 the you, you've killed my son turned into a desire to bless and to thank the people around me. Wow. Now I had been praying and crying out for oneness. And a little bit after that, as clearly as I can hear you this afternoon, Kev, I heard Abba, Father, in my head saying, you have prayed that we would be more one. Well, now we are. We both have lost a son. You, you commented yesterday, too, on the, the experience of that, how it impacted your interior world. Dad was always so um, aware of his interior world in ways that I think most of us, because because quite frankly, when you start to dive into to, to what's going on inside, it gets pretty ugly, and it gets pretty scary. Well, then, and you and said I, that after Rob passed, you you had a different kind of um, I can't remember the word, but 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 just kind of an impact or, or kind of a feeling from your interior world that put you in touch with spots that maybe you were completely unaware of. Well, I came to a fork in the road, and one side was love less and trust less and be angry about this bitter loss yeah but it was a precipice it was going off into the abyss yeah. and the other side was love more and trust me more because of the loss let and, me uh, i'm sorry keep going well that was the answer to the prayer for oneness yeah i'd also been praying to understand what this, this other thing Jesus promised that he'd already given us, this glory thing, doxa in Greek, but I understand it better in Latin, gravitas. I always thought of glory as being, you know, to be exalted, to be praised. Not at all. Glory means the capacity to bear huge weight. The, the Roman concept of gravitas. And, and God was saying, you know, we both lost a son. Yeah. Will you, wow. will you let me bring happiness out of this for others will you stop protecting yourself by the way in the way you relate to other people will you become happy the way my son jesus was happy yeah he was he he was devoted to happiness but it was another kind of happiness yeah Maybe book title huh <laughs> A different kind of happiness is different is the title. kind of happiness. Yeah. It, 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 you know, even when you go back to that book and we start to talk a little bit about inside out, a lot of that has really stemmed from this book here. Yes. And I, I, I got a quote this morning and I want to just read it real quickly to everyone listening, because I think it kind of, it kind of encapsulates some of what you're talking about too. Um, you know, I read, I've read inside out a few times and it's been several years since I've read it just in, until just recently. And a, and, and a guy sends us this, uh, this email this morning, a friend of the ministries and, uh, and, and a friend of dad's uh, when dad was alive. Um, he's, uh, he's a brother from the United Kingdom. And he just said, he said something that was really interesting. He said that he went through the master's degree program at Grace Seminary when dad was doing that years and years ago. And he said that for most people who go, have gone through that program, they probably looked at that time of what book was Larry writing when we went through the program? Well, <laughs> for him... What was yeah well sure that was what was on his heart but for him it was understanding people and inside out and um and so he says this he says although I understood the concepts it took several years for them to be part of me at a heart level and mm -hmm. I mean I that just hit me like right in the forehead when when I read that because as I was reading inside out this week it just I, I think I'm a different person I've embraced uh trials now i said to you too i don't want what you went through i don't want to lose my son you know um but but how you've come out of it but he says i've embraced this at a heart level that's taken several years i found that larry's touched me where other christian counselors have left me dry and weary and they're they're changed behavior kind of folks then i was asked to do a talk at labrie on the issues of the heart in our style of relating and from that moment on, whenever I was asked to suggest a talk or do a series of talks, that theme becomes the basic lecture. Just the other night, I listened to, to what dad said, which was 
the call to, to relational holiness. This was in Cambridge when he spoke there in 2017. And he gave, it, he gave this talk a few days later after he had met dad and my mom, Rachel, and they spent an enjoyable time together. They, had, they, were, they were talking, they were eating, um, and that, that relationships were the key message to the very end of his life, of dad's life. Mm -hmm. um, and it certainly changed not only my thinking, but my life. And, uh, and then he says, interestingly enough, the, the first print of the book, Inside Out, that were sold on the Grace uh, Seminary bookstore, they were bound in, wrongly. And he queried whether it was a mistake that was made from the inside out. So <laughs> it leaves me with a little, little of that, but it just... It's just amazing what it what it takes to. Here's the question I have for you, Glenn. All that you've been through in the last um, in the last year, um, and and we can we can talk about other things too. But I, I I know that I know your story is your your plate is very full right now. Um, the 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 world has 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 beaten you down, and it started, you know, with Ron with, with Rob, excuse me, passing away. But 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 you've you've you found something in it where you you've talked about joy. And you talked about being aware of, of something going on in a, in a spot in your internal world more. Tell me, tell me a little bit about, about that. What's going on there? How do, you, how do you become aware of that? And I know Dad unpacks a lot of that in Inside Out, but I'm inter just in, interested to see how that impacted you. More conversations that matter. You know, when somebody is aware that you've lost a son, you've been mentoring him, you've been turning businesses over to him, and all of a sudden he's gone. So a lot of your future crashes and burns in that. There's a lot of grief. There are marital struggles. Angela and I have been married 44 years and we're doing well, but it wouldn't be true to say that we weren't struggling and there was anger and recriminations and why not this and why not that? Um, once you go through that, I think people see in your face, your voice, maybe feel from your heart, that maybe they could admit mm. what hurts, what they're afraid of. They can talk about pain. And I've longed to have those kinds of conversations that matter that, you know, Larry used to talk about. Mm. Um, because, you know, that's, that, that's what lasts. Yeah. The stuff of life, accomplishments, trips, joys, in the normal sense of the word, don't last. But now I'm finding more people are willing to open up and maybe take the mask off a little bit and ask some questions. Um, that's one of the best things that's changed. Yeah. It was costly. Oh, it hurts. Oh. Um, and um, you know, we're, we're, we're struggling with a daughter who's struggling with alcoholism. Uh, so the, the, the hurt goes on. Um, but I, I think there's also a boldness, uh, nothing less to lose kind of sense um, of, of freedom, of, okay, this really is what the narrow road is. This, this is where, this is how sonship happens. Suffering is how you learn sonship how how i really know that abba loves me you know glenn as you start to unpack this and um and and we start to um you know think about this a little bit what what was going on and and because i've seen it in you uh i I've, I've known you well and we've had some really good conversations but i've seen it in the last in the last year plus that you're a different person and that was what dad was always just, you know, so into is, is where does real change occur? And tell me what, what was that transformation like, man? I mean, you I know, think one, I'm of, one, of, one of the things your dad said to me was, he said, <laughs> uh, you usually have five or six good ideas and you tell me 11 of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You mess it all up. <laughs> uh, another thing he said is you are not yet ashamed enough of how much you worship your own intellect. Now, I'm, I'm not trying to brag about my intellect, certainly not when we're talking about Larry Crabb, but he went right to the heart of it. Yeah. And losing a son, being out of control, unable to manage my own emotions, 
unable to make any sense of this, deeply involved in how could you, God, why now? Uh, our son Rob uh, battled for 12 years with alcoholism. He had almost 14 years clean and sober and had gotten a, a bachelor's degree, a, a, a master's degree and was, and, and, and was, you know, successful in business and was engaged to be married. Why now, Father? Yeah. Why? Why? You agonize over those questions, but that got me to the end of my own little mind. That, that, that got me to absolutely be appalled yeah. at what I tried to reason out. And my mind stuck in the four dimensions of time and space can't begin to deal with things that are trans-dimensional, that are within the realm of the kingdom of heaven, beyond me. And another thing I'd prayed for is humility, and that'd be a whole other different talk, but a whole discussion and a fun one, but I had no idea what humility was. Yeah. Oh man. I, I, I resonate with that, bro. As, as, as you talk, I, my mind goes to, and I don't even know where I heard this. I don't think this was my dad's comment, but oh boy, he sure could have been. And if, if I don't know who it is much like he would give CS Lewis credit, I think I'd give it to him. But it seems to me that you're being um, released from the burden of self in a way that, um, that, that, that makes me hungry for that um, because I've seen it in you. And um and, and it's been difficult for you in years past to rest, mm -hmm. just the soul rest, not to sleep or anything. Maybe it's difficult for you to do that too, but, but to rest and, um, and you're being, you know, released from the burden of self. I just, I like that phrase because I think that that's what's happening to you, bro. And I sense it because I see, because you, you, you're, you're different. How you talk to me is different, which I assume is different how you talk to everybody else now. And what does it really mean to put Jesus on display? Like, mm. like dad always talked about by how we talk to people, by how we relate, because you're now in touch with your interior world in a way that is changing you. And that was, that was kind of the theme of inside out is, is that's the, you know, I, I mean, even, even the subtitle real change is possible if you're willing to start on the inside from the inside out. Mm -hmm. And, and, and no one wants to do that. I, you know, I, as we go through the book, I saw the, the, the iceberg, um, you know, uh, analogies and metaphors there. And boy, I remember, I remember when those were being created. Cause I think that dad would, would start to design that stuff with us at the, at the dining room table on a <laughs> overhead projector. And, and that's, and that's no lie. He, he would, he would, he would have an, you know, he told, you know, he used to teach Bible study to Kenny and, and myself when we were little kids with an overhead projector. And I can remember those, those, those icebergs and, and thinking, you know, and I remember, I remember Larry telling me, Oh, Glenn, I've repented of those overhead view graph sessions. <laughs> Why don't you just relax with Rob? Stop <clears throat> teaching him so much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just be present with him. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's part of the sorrow because I learned that too late. Yeah. Now I, I, I'm, I'm counting on heaven. I'm confident that there'll be all the time in eternity. And yet it doesn't take the pain away now, but the pain, I tried to learn what humility was and practice it as a discipline. And frankly, you know, it, in a, by comparison, it was a waste of time because to encounter humility, to, you encounter being the end of yourself, being, helpless um, is an experience that you can't learn you can't teach um it's it's really you know i remember we talked about this a little yesterday it, it reminds me of a song that i was working up for a little show that we're going to do this weekend and it, it says i am nothing without you mm -hmm. and to really i mean you know there's something that's that's very humbling about that and to realize that that with, with outside of the lord we have no um, opportunity to, to make impact in ways that we want and, and, and we're nothing. And I, I don't think I've understood that, um, even a little bit until, until just recently in the last year where, you know, where God has taken me on a, on a bit of a journey that, um, that I can say I'm grateful for and, and that I've experienced the peace that passes all understanding and a joy in the midst of, of, of taking care of my wife who was struggling with cancer. Now I didn't lose a son to death, 
Um, and that, um, I, I, don't, I don't even have a paradigm for that, Glenn. Um, but, but I do have a wife who's struggling with cancer and that gives me a little bit of a paradigm for, for what it means to of course have does. the privilege, to have the privilege of, of moving through that in a way that hopefully continues to put the Lord on display. And I've not known that, um, you know, I've been a, an arrogant, um, you know, self-absorbed person who thought I was on the right track. And, and, and as I, as the Lord kind of, kind of allows life to hit you, which it will to all of us at some point, mm -hmm. you know, where you go from there, you talked about the fork in the road. Well, last month, when, when you talk about pressures off, which was the book we did last month, right. that says at every moment you're coming up to a, to a fork in the road. Yeah. And so as, as that, at that moment, I think that with the understanding of what's going on inside where your interior world, that was the word, word that dad loved to talk about. Um, what's really happening in there? And, and he, I, I said to him, I said to dad one time, how do people avoid that? You see some of these people who their lives are just in turmoil and they just still don't seem to want to um, look at it from an inside perspective. And he said, you just anesthetize yourself. Well, Whether they avoid it with a lie. They believe sure. a lie. They enshrine the lie as a God. I can make my life work out right. If I just try harder, work harder, um, yeah. study more, think more. No, that's the lie. It's it's what the uh, the the email says. It's it's change your behavior, straighten up, get it get it right. You know, I loved what dad what dad always talked about. It was was the release, because if we have the Holy Spirit in us, getting in touch with your interior world allows that release to happen. Where now, I really do want to love people, in a way that puts them above myself. And you know, the funny um, thing is that what I experienced was being appalled with myself yeah i didn't and i've been there bro release in uh oh wow now i'm safe in the lord and this feels good no it's 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 i've loved angela i've loved rob self-protectively for yeah. for what he can do for me yeah i've i've been a a, a, a great employee. I've been a, a great elder. I've been a great whatever, as long as the people I was serving made me feel good. Yeah. And as long, but when I couldn't get anything out of them, I wasn't loyal. I wasn't in submission. I wasn't underneath pushing them up. Um, all of these appalling realizations about myself was what came washing out of this grief and it's not over and that no no it, yeah it's not over but that was the big there's a conviction that came out of it a um uh, you know not a not a resolution i had to make yeah. like a new year's resolution it was a conviction that i knew that i knew that i knew that self-protecting love wasn't love it was bogus and that risky being present I don't know how this is going to work out and I very well may get hurt. Love is what I most deeply want. That's what's most alive in me. That's why what is I, it so hard to catch this, Glenn? Why is it, why is it so hard to look inside? Why, I mean, I, we know it's, we know it gets ugly. We know it gets scary. I mean, we know that, but why, why do people just naturally avoid that? And, and that it really is only through a, a, a supernatural intervention of the spirit that you really have the opportunity that sometimes is triggered by the loss of a son, by, by your wife it's, being diagnosed think, with cancer. I think the answer is that it's hardwired into the physics of the universe we're in. We're subject to entropy, yes. unwinding, decay, deterioration, disease, and death. Nobody escapes it. Death is terrifying. Law, you know, little steps of loss and ultimate loss is terrifying. And the res human response to fear is control. It's yes. control. That's it. I'm going to get control. And it's Manage. that core sin. We start to play God. I start to play God. I'm going to make my life work out right. I'm going to cause good. I'm going to stop evil. Sounds like a very good thing. God, God would approve of that, right? Cause good, stop evil. No, I don't have the perspective, the wisdom, the judgment, or the virtue to actually cause good and actually stop evil. because. I would have looked at the death of my son, Rob, or Jesus, as I can put myself in the father's place, and said, not good, not good thing. Stop that. 
So I like it. So what? It's this playing God thing of trying to control. Yeah. And the solution is so simple, but it it's costly. Stop trying. I've often said that the solution to a good marriage is pretty simple, but it's really hard to implement. <laughs> you know, yeah, so tell yeah. me this, bro, as we as we get ready to wrap up here and maybe take a question or two, if anyone has any of those questions, uh, talking to a guy, who, you know, who's who's changed. But but what has changed? What What's different about you now that wasn't the same before? Can you put your finger on it? Can you can you articulate it in some way? I'm just curious. I'm aware of the oneness that I prayed for. I'm aware of God's presence, the way I was afraid I was excluded from. I didn't doubt that I was a believer. I didn't doubt that I was saved, but I didn't feel God's presence. And it's in the brokenness. It's in the desperation. It's in the grief. It's in the pain. It's in the loss that I have everything. I have nobody but God. You know, we're going to blame Lewis again. I'll, I'll mangle the quote, but, you know, it's like the guy, it's like the fish who says, I have no place to swim except the ocean. I've got no place to exist except in the infinite, merciful, wonderful, loving God. Wow. And I'm finding, I used to say, people don't want to talk about loss. You know, Jesus, you know, world's greatest loser, not in the failure sense but the only person who came to intentionally be born to lose. to oh, So we could win. Die so we could win. Yes. He yeah. chose to lose. His life was all about loss. Loss of a childhood, I think. Loss of family. Loss of a wife. Loss of kids. Loss of, of, of real respect in the community. Loss of useful disciples. <laughs> um, loss of respect by the, the Jewish establishment, and then the loss of his life. He intended to lose. To make and all things new. We don't, to make everything perfect. And we don't want to talk about loss. But through our losses, I've found that there's some people who are willing to talk about loss now. They ask some questions. Everything I, that you say, Glenn, is counterintuitive. Well, I mean, sure. you're talking you're talking about a joy in, in in that you've experienced a depth of of awareness yeah. that that was a result of your son's passing. Um, <clears throat> you, you know, you, you you talk to some people and you you start to use those words and they think you're a lunatic. How do you convey that to people to let them know that there really is opportunity all the time, no matter what? Take the mask off. Let mm -hmm. them know about your pain. Um, in an appropriate, you know, settings, uh, look, look for their pain, look for where they're hiding from the pain and yeah. invite them to have a conversation that matters. Yeah. Invite them to look at Jesus as conquering death by dying of conquering loss by losing. You're, you're different, bro. You're, <laughs> you're different. And, and I mean, and, 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 and I, I love it because it just has, God's fingerprints all over it. And in the midst of, and I know all the stuff going on beyond uh, just having lost Rob, uh, which was incredibly intense, un unquestionably. But I know all the other stuff that's going on too. And you're a different person, the way you've encouraged me in the midst of your struggle. And I, I just want a little bit of that, man. I, I just want to, you know, just tell you how, how grateful um, <laughs> I am to see that because it gives me hope. You're, you're an example, and you're a little farther down the road than I am um, right now. So, um, you know, but, but I see how you've moved and how you've changed, and I, I, I have to use the word transformational, and I don't use that word at all lightly, because I think it's too thrown around, but you have transformationally changed. You were here, now you're here, and, and I, 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 I wish we could package that. I know dad was so against all of that, and the, the, the formulas of, of that, because there is no formula, but I guess the only common denominator, if you will, is struggle and suffering. Um, well, one of those three Crabian words uh, we were going to put in a t-shirt once, uh, connection, transformation, encounter. I, wanna, I want encounter with Jesus. I want connection with others. And I want transformation into the image of Jesus. Yeah, I love that. Man. Life statement. Well, we've got a few questions. 
Glenn, if you're uh, if you're up for answering a few questions, I know you're the answer man. So um, let's look at just a few of the questions that came in and see if we can knock some of these down. Um, one of them actually was to me here real quick. So, but I, I want you know it's what I just asked you is it says Cap, what would you say is changing in you, and how would you say that change occurred? Um, and this is something I've thought about a lot. Um, I've said to I think a lot of the people watching today, I've said that I was walking in in tall cotton for the first 52 years of my life. Um, God, you're doing a great job. Keep it up. You know, um, I'll try to do my, my, my end and you, you keep it up because you're doing it. God, keep it going. And then when you get hit with a diagnosis sitting in a waiting room, uh, as you're sitting there chatting with a, um, a cardiothoracic surgeon and he tells you that your wife's got stage four lung cancer, everything changes right there. Boom. And, and, and just in terms of priorities, in terms of thinking and and I'd say that 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 the, the what I would say is changing in me is this, is I am detaching from this world now. And I've said this to you, Glenn, I know. Um, mm -hmm. But the things that I thought were important before are not as important. I loved what my dad used to say, and he said this for probably the last 10, 15 years of his life, is I don't care. And it's like, well, what are you talking about, dad? Well, I think I now understand that. Um, you know, and, and what, what it did was it made him so aware of what he did care about, which was relationality. And how do I put Jesus on display as I'm talking to my brother, Glenn, who's hurting really bad because he just lost his son. And dad was so good at that. And, and, and then the, the second part of it is, you know, what's changing in me? I'm, I'm detaching from this world in a way that that's painful and joyful. And I don't know if those, they, they, they're going together somehow. And it's just very confusing, but it's real. And I, that's all I can say. And how would you say the change occurred? It was a willingness, and, and this is this is the hardest thing, but it was a willingness to embrace the suffering. And and I, I just I, I now say, and I really mean this, and I'm not just trying to be glib or whatever the word would be, but I'm grateful for what we've been through in this last year. And I wish it could have been me and not Kimmy, um, but watching her having the privilege of taking care of her, watching her grow in the yeah. sense of, of, um, of what the Lord's doing in her life. And, 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 and then just detaching where God, I, I, I really don't want anything other than you. And, and if, if, you know, I, I remember dad used to say, if, if, if someone came to you and said, or God came to you and said, you can have everything you want, but you will never have the opportunity to see my face. That chill that you get down your, your neck when you hear that is the spirit. This, you know, I want to see your face, Jesus. That's how change occurs. And being aware that you are doing me good no matter what is going on and allowing me then to become in touch with my interior world in a way that really does allow a transformational change. And so I'm grateful. Um, I'm just grateful at what God's doing in me right now, as he's, he's saying kept, you know, it, to me, it, it says that he's not done with me. I'm still going to mm -hmm. use you, but, but we can all make that decision. And I'm not the first guy who's, who's, whose wife's been hit with bad news. You're not the first guy who's lost a child. You have options mm -hmm. of ways to go. There's always the fork in the road. And some take the option on the left and they say, I'm not going to pursue you, Lord. How can I trust someone who allows this to happen to me? Um, and you know, we, we can start getting into the whole notion of sovereignty and all of that, but, but, but the fact of the matter is he's doing this so we can see him a little bit more and, and rely on him more. Because this world, if you put your eggs in this basket, you're setting yourself up for failure. And I'm realizing that in a way that I've never realized it before. Um, and like you said, it's, I'm just realizing it a little bit and we continue to keep going. Um, so I'm getting some people commenting now that, that they see a lot of dad in me right now. And I, <laughs> I just, I'm so humbled by that comment. If I can be just a, a fraction of what that guy was and what that guy is to all of us still today, um, then God, you will have won. And, um, and God's still shaping both of us, Glenn. And I just, I couldn't be more proud of you. I, I couldn't love you more. Um, I, I pray for you all the time. I pray for Angela. Because God's doing something in your life, bro, that is absolutely tangible, and I can see it, and I just want you to keep going. Well, I've seen the transformation in you, Kev, in, in, in over the last 20 years, or a little more, <laughs> we're older than we think, 
but also particularly since this struggle with Kimmy. I've seen your devotion to her. I've seen, um, uh, I, you know, a, an accelerating transformation in you and an acceptance that, you know, she may heal or this may be a, a precious time that, that I, uh, I accept for a time. I like the word accelerated transformation because this was not what I would have probably, no. <laughs> you know, probably wanted. I mean, you know, I, no, no one wishes for their son to die. No one wishes for their wife to get sick. Uh, you, you know, I mean, it just doesn't, but, but, but when it happens and it will happen, um, and I'm not saying that specifically, but life will kick you in the teeth. And when that happens, how are you going to handle it? And, and I hope that you have, uh, the ability, and I'm not talking to you now, Glenn, but talking to myself and talking to everyone, I hope we have this, the centeredness in Christ to realize that our identity is in him and that only through him do we, do we matter because nothing else matters. And we have nothing outside of God. And I'm now, uh, I mean, I realize that. And, you know, I, I, it takes me back to the whole, the whole notion of how short this life is, but how, how what an opportunity we have to impact eternity now in how we love others and and that starts and how, from the inside out and how we shortchange other people when we respond when they say how are you with fine or some other mask some other hiding or we let them respond and get away with just oh i'm fine i'm okay yeah I yeah guess. just the, the the flippant answer the right Right. Let, let me ask you a question, bro. Someone's asking a question of you. Can you speak more of knowing the love of God by seeing more of your wretchedness? <laughs> yes, yes. I don't like that view, but <laughs> yes, I can. Um, yes, the I'm overwhelmed by my need for salvation, for redemption, for healing, for transformation. Um, I, I, I guess the depth of my depravity, you know, I used to struggle with the Presbyterian kind of, uh, you know, total depravity uh, ideas. Don't struggle with it anymore. Don't preach it. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm depraved. I'm sinful. I'm self-focused. I can't get outside of my own perspective on my own. Yeah. Some things blow you out of the water and force you to see from different perspective. But if you live through it, it does come back to, I live in my own brain, my own mind, my own body, my own flesh, and I see from that point of view, yes. To answer yeah. that person's question, yeah, it, 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 it overwhelms me huh. with the joy that uh, I'm, I'm a bigger mess than I think I am, <laughs> and I'm covered. You're a mess, I'm a mess. Wasn't that the title of a book dad wanted to put out? Yeah. What yeah. thoughts would you offer someone who longs for the oneness that you're talking about, but is afraid when they hear your story? Because <laughs> that's me. I, I don't want my son to die. You know, I mean, I, I just, whew. Well, that's... I mean, God doesn't allow that very often, thankfully. But it, except entertain the possibility that every single loss, every disappointment, large or small, is an opportunity. I love that. So, so, so important. One more question, Glenn. We've got a couple of minutes left. And I just want to say before I ask you this question, bro, I really appreciate you joining me today and, and sharing your story with some of these people. Um, I think it could be very helpful. Um, and your story is very heavy. And, and um, but also at the same time, very joyful in a, in a wild way. You mentioned pursuing humility. Um, and we talked about that a little bit. And then actually experiencing it after your son's passing. What role does our agency play in our own sanctification? <laughs> That's a good question right there. <laughs> uh, so agency meaning our will, I guess. I think uh, so. Our, yeah. Our, our ability to choose. What we choose. Yeah. Well, uh, we don't have enough time to look at all sides of this, and if we did, we couldn't, we couldn't resolve it because it's beyond, it's it's a trans you know trans dimensional question. Um, I think God's blessed us with free will. 
I think he loves the fact that we choose. I think he's got it covered when we choose wrongly. Yeah. Um, I think it delights him. I think that he progressively reveals the depth of my depravity, my self-protecting love, which is no love at all. Uh, he opens my eyes. Um, he lovingly breaks my heart. Um, and I get to cooperate with that. I don't have to. It's not a, it's not a drill, a discipline that I has to, have to enforce on myself. I get to. Yes. I, I, I discovered. I mean, you know, you know how crazy I am. Um, my first I dog's do. name was, was, was Dunamis. And my second dog's name is Makarios. Because, you know, the Beatitudes, the blessings, the Makarios in Matthew 5, um, <laughs> you know, but, the, but, but they're, nine, they're, they're nine blessings. Well, do you know what blessing zero is? Um, it's, it's all I need is X and then I'll be happy. God blessed are those who, you know, get what they long for that, you know, that's, that's the zero Makarios that isn't true. So I had to, I had to name my dog Makarios to remember (laughs) that all of those blessings have cost. Yeah. All of those blessings involve surrender. Um, It's been interesting. Um, We've, we're getting just some comments on, on, on humility, uh, you know, in, in some ways it means kindness, to be gentle, to be lowly. Um, and I think it enca- encapsulates all that and even more um, because there was a humility in Christ that was just hard to, when, when this is God. And um, I don't know, that word humility, it, it, it kind of reminds me of the same word of, of maturity. But to tell you a quick story as we get ready to close here, dad one time asked my grandfather, whose book I have here, and, and Grandpa Crab was, uh, oh, mid to, mid to late 80s. He passed away at 89. And uh, this was a few years before he passed. And most of you know, my grandfather didn't have, uh, he had a fifth grade education. He quit going to school in fifth grade because he had to support his family. His father had passed away. Um, and he wrote a little bit about that in a book called God of My Fathers. Um, but, but dad asked him the question, uh, dad my dad speaking to his dad he said dad do you do you think you're mature (laughs) and my grandfather's answer was just one of those he just got very very anxious and mature no I no I'm not even I'm not even close and this was a 85 year old man Mm. um, who who still was the chief of all sinners in his mind and still needed the blood of the Lord that day as much as ever needed it and um, that just sends a message to me um, that we're, we're, we're on this narrow road till the end. And I keep thinking when I think of my, my father, when I think of my grandfather, who was, who I actually was with grandpa when he, when he took his last breath with my, my right hand on his head, you finished the race and you finished it well. And the hardest part of the race is always the end. And to watch those two men, uh, who I had a chance to love finish in that way, Glenn, that gives me hope for us. Yes. And I want I want you to finish well, bro. And uh, and you, Kev, and and being tempted to get off the road doesn't mean we are off the road. Being tempted means we're worth tempting. Mm-hmm. Um, so don't don't despair uh, if you know if you struggle with being on this narrow road. I do. Everybody does. Yeah. Uh, Larry did. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, he did. Well, let me ask you one last question. And this oh, is, okay. this, this is, I think, a good one, which is why I'm asking it here is, is c- can we somehow dismiss or alter the deep agony of loss where it really is painful? There's no question. Losing your son, hearing my wife's cancer, that, that was painful. So that the sheer emotion of it doesn't overtake us. How do we dismiss that? How, or not dismiss, and I don't know, alter, or I don't even know what the words are there. But how did you, how did you work through that at some level? Well, Jesus wept over Lazarus' death. He wept over many things, and he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So I don't think we try not to feel the pain. I, I think that'd be, that would, that's, that's a lie. The truth is we feel the pain. Yeah. Crying out in the pain doesn't offend. Don't deny the pain. Father God that I know, don't deny it. I guess you get a little more able to not be thrown off. To be honest with your red dot. Yeah. Where you really are. Here's where I am, God. 
Yeah. And man, it's not fun. I mean, at, at, at 3 a.m. in the morning, I, I knew to ask somebody else to drive me home from the hospital after Rob had died. Yeah. Um, it, it, I wasn't denying the pain, but I was also not going to risk somebody else's life. Yeah. Well, brother, I, I just, I just want to say again how much I appreciate you and, um, and I love you. Thanks for joining today. Thanks for joining me today. Oh, and doing this. this was fun. This. I mean, it's just, it's just fun. And, you know, the, the, the tough piece is you and I could probably go for another couple of hours and, <laughs> and everybody's like, when are these guys going to wrap up here for crying out loud? But I just want to say thank you to everybody for joining us today as well. And, um, and I really do encourage you to dive into this book, uh, Inside Out. It, um, it has uh, the opportunity for life-changing implications. And um, and when you really do start to understand and see and be aware of what's going on in your interior world a little bit more, um, the, the chance to really change and, and in terms of how you talk to people, how you interact with people, how you relate with others can put Jesus on display. So from all of us at Larger Story, thanks for joining us today. Uh, we encourage you to join us next month on the 27th as we start to talk about the safest place on earth, which is now becoming a true spiritual community. So everybody, please have a safe week, a safe weekend, and uh, God bless you. Thanks, Glenn.